Hmm, that'll do. Well, I am of course joking, but it is surprising how many athletes overlook tire pressure and the importance of them. And after all, they play a pretty big part. They're your contact point with the ground, they provide you traction whilst aiming to reduce your rolling resistance, and the pressure of them is very important. It changes that massively. So today, I'm gonna to be running you through your tire pressures for a triathlon. Right, you see these numbers on the sidewall here? Well, they're on pretty much all tires and they are the recommended maximum pressure. And if you're like me, you may well have thought, ah, oh, it's good conditions, it's race day. Oh, I'd just pump them up to somewhere near the maximum recommended pressure. Very sciencey stuff, eh? Yeah, not really. Um, since then, I've learned a lot more about tire pressures. And in fact, high pressures aren't always the answer. A lot of the latest research is showing that lower pressures actually have better grip better comfort and even less friction or rolling resistance. So what should you be riding and how do you work it out? Well, it actually comes down to a number of factors, including the weather, the temperature, the surface that you're riding on, the tires that you're using, and even your own body weight. So let's take a look into those. See, when a cyclist sits on their bike, the tire compresses. How much the tire compresses depends on both the pressure within that tire and the weight of the cyclist. Now, there's a load of theories out there as to how high you should pump your tires depending on your weight. But the main trend is that the heavier the cyclist, the higher the pressure. Pretty obvious stuff, hey? But to complicate things further, as the tire width decreases, the pressure in the tire should increase and obviously our body weight distribution varies throughout the bike so we should generally have a higher pressure in the rear tire as more body weight is placed over that rear wheel and less pressure in the front wheel. Well this leads us nicely on to rolling resistance. Now rolling resistance is friction and we don't want friction we want to go fast. The greater the friction, the greater the rolling resistance. And that is often caused by an underinflated tire. And what happens with an underinflated tire is that more of the tire is in contact with the road and therefore causes friction. But interestingly, an overinflated tire can also increase rolling resistance. And what happens there is that the tire essentially bounces along the surface of the road rather than rolling smoothly along it and also making it pretty uncomfortable. But let's throw grip into the equation here. It's a pretty important job from the tire. See, the more that the tire can conform to and make contact with the surface of the road, the better the grip. So a tire that's been overinflated and bounces along the surface of the road isn't gonna have as much grip as a tire at a lower pressure. Yeah, it's pretty complicated stuff, isn't it? So a couple of the main factors that we should be considering when we're heading out on a ride are the conditions, the riding style, and also the surfaces that we're gonna be riding on. If you're heading out for a weekend poodle down some country lanes, then you can afford to run slightly lower pressures in the tires, both for comfort and for grip. But then you might be inclined to run slightly higher pressures for something like a triathlon or a time trial where you want to reduce that rolling resistance. So opting for something slightly closer to that recommended maximum pressure is fine if you're gonna be riding on glass smooth roads. But let's be honest, how often do we find those, particularly in the UK? So where you can, do your research on the course and the surfaces that you're gonna be riding on and consider dropping the pressure a little bit more if you're gonna be riding on wet surfaces. So there are a number of different calculations and tables out there to help you get the pressure for different tire widths and different rider weights. But today, I'm gonna to use the Quark TireWiz app to help me. Now before I explain what TireWiz is, let's just use the app to work out what my recommended tire pressure should be. Right, it's recommending 84 PSI in the front and 89 PSI in the back for me. And I'll be honest, that's actually a little bit less than I'm used to, but it's not a million miles off and I do trust these clever folk at Quark. Now TireWiz is actually these clever devices here and they're essentially an extension of the valves just here and they go in inner tubes, tubular tires and even tubeless tires 
All that is required is to have a removable valve core, which is this little pit here. Well, they read the pressure of your tires immediately as you're pumping them, as you're riding them, even as you're getting a puncture, but let's not hope for the latter. Now they then connect to the app on your phone so you can see in real time what the pressures of your tires are and if you're drifting outside of that recommended range and it even connect to most bike computers. Now there is actually something that I'd really like to explore with tire pressures and by using these devices and for that I need a good climb. Hmm, I'm thinking Mallorca. Yeah, definitely Mallorca. This definitely warrants a trip to Mallorca. I'll be honest, this idea of temperature change and pressure change has intrigued me for years. I mean, I understand that theoretically, as the tyres heat up through travelling at speed, the friction, the braking, that the pressure in the tyres increases. So I thought I'd actually investigate this a little bit. So I've taken myself to the top of this nice long climb in Mallorca, where I know that I'm going to be travelling at some speed, rounding some corners, and really sort of put it to the test, see what my pressure is like at the bottom. Currently I've left it at 84 in the front, 89 in the rear as suggested, but let's check again at the bottom. Right, that was really good fun. I love that descent. So now I can check the pressures on the Quark Tires app. And the front tire is around two PSI higher than when I started at the top of the climb. And the rear is more or less the same, which has surprised me. I thought we might have seen an increase on both. Um, but I think the reason why we're seeing that increase on the front is where I'm basically scrubbing the speed a little bit more with the front brake on a descent like this. So what's happening is the rim is heating up. That then in turn is heating the tire up and then the pressure within that tire. I think if I was riding the, my bike for longer, um, putting weight through the saddle, that then is going through to the rear tire. We might have seen a bit more of an increase in the rear tire and possibly of a longer descent. Either way, that's been really interesting. I think this could be a really useful tool if you're looking to sort of fine tune your performance and even comfort as we go from different courses, different races, and even riding in different conditions. And for those weight weenies out there that might be worried about adding something extra to their already lightweight bikes, these devices just come in at just 10 gram per unit. So barely noticeable really. And as I showed earlier, they're quite easy to switch from bike to bike and wheel to wheel. And you could even maybe train with them and then take them off for race day. Whew, what a trip. Well, you might've been hoping for a magic tire pressure number today. And unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that. Though I would say next time you're heading to a race and you're pumping your tires up, just take into consideration some of those factors that I've discussed in today's video. Or better, start playing around with different tyre pressures for your day-to-day -day training. Now, if you'd like to see more videos from GTN, just click on the globe and subscribe. And if you'd like to see a little versus between a clincher and a tubular tyre and changing it for race day, just click up here. And if you'd like to see how to fix a race day puncture for a clincher tyre, just click down here.